Hi everyone, my name's Ski Oakenfall and it's great to be back with another Deconstruction. This time we're going to be looking at this track by Bjork called Venus as a Boy, classic track. Before we get into Deconstruction, let's just have a look at some uh, Venus facts. So it was produced by Nelly Hooper. He's uh, originally from Bristol, from the Wild Bunch, produced bands like Soul to Soul, Massive Attack, Smashing Pumpkins, very influential producer. The track's written and sung by Bjork. Um, it contains a sample, which we're going to look at in a bit. Um, it's from an artist called Mayumi Miyata, Japanese artist, an album that came out in 1986, and it's called Music for Shoal and Harp. The musical director of the track was Talvin Singh, um, and the string arrangement was done by Sure Sath. It came from her debut album, uh, entitled Debut. It came out just after uh, her Sugar Cubes project. Released on August the 23rd, 1993, on the label One Little Indian. Again, that was a great independent label. Released the Sugar Cubes, bands like The Shaman, Skunk and Ancy, uh, Sneaker Pimps. And yeah, it was recorded at Olympic Studios in London, very famous studio. Um, and then the strings were recorded uh, in Mumbai at a studio called Beat Studio. It did incredibly well, uh, the track, um, and really kind of launched her solo career. Um, and interestingly, has had more than 30 cover versions, so pretty popular. And style-wise, I mean, really is a kind of melting pot of, uh, of genres, really. There's a chill-out vibe to it, kind of ambient, but then there's the dubby vibe with the kind of kick drum and the drums. Then Talvin Singh brings this kind of Indian orchestral vibe. Um, and then also with the Japanese sample, it really is a kind of melting pot, so. Great, so great track. So yeah, let's just have a listen to this sample. This was a real revelation when I found this. I started off trying to kind of recreate the sound and then realized that it was actually a sample. So let's just have a little listen to this. So try and get hold of that on Discord if you can. So as well as doing deconstruction, this has also been uh, our termly project for our Point Blank students. It's from our Level 6 Advanced Recording and Mixing module, which is part of the Music Production and Sound Engineering degree. And the students do lots of projects, recording projects, um, one of which is uh, recording a string ensemble. There's an image here of uh, the students and the uh, lecturer. Um, recording the string session um, and we collaborate with the students from the Royal Academy of Music every term, create the score ourselves, uh, our very own Claire Selby, um, very talented musician and also our admissions manager as well, um, she creates the score. And we were very lucky to uh, invite our former student Gliza de Castro um, to record the vocal for it as well, so we're going to listen to that as well in a bit. So there we go, let's uh, get into the deconstruction. So as ever, using my, uh, my favourite DAW Ableton and also my favourite controller Push 2. We're going to start off building the track up um, and look at the drums first. So um, I've got a drum rack here, I've got this sample which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've got a tambourine sound, this uh, tabla sound, a kick drum, 909 kick, um, and then this Japanese bell. So I've actually got the uh, this Mayumi Miyata track here and uh, just just while we have it I'll just uh, play a little bit more down the line because it really is a fantastic track I mean there's a lot of potential for uh, other samples in there but yeah this is the this is the sample um, that she used um, so just to show you uh, how I've used that so if I just cut that part out there, there we go, and I can just literally just drag that onto a drum rack there, there we go, and you can actually edit that on push as well, so if I just zoom in and just set the start point there, um, we'll set the mode to classic mode, there we go, so that's, that's the sample. Um, I did a bit of processing on that as well. As you can hear, it's quite wide sounding, so I actually used the utility here and I just decreased uh, the width um, and also used some EQ as well just to take out some of the bottom end and, and uh, boost a bit of the high mid as well. So there we go. Great, so let's actually start putting this in. Uh, now one interesting feature of the track is it's got a very kind of triplety feel. The tempo is at 135. I'm just going to bring up 
uh, this image here was the chords. Now it's playing in eight. So if we just uh, if we just count, I'll just play the metronome actually now, um, and just play up here. There we go. So that's playing um, quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And if I just play, uh, if I just uh, clap quavers, that's going to be the eighth notes. But the sound of this song is like this. So if I play, uh, if I can now clap triplet quavers, it's like this. I'm just missing out that middle note of those triplet quavers, so it's like this. Now what I could do is set the quantize to eighth triplets, but instead of that I'm going to use uh, swing to create this, and just because I don't want it to be complete triplets, I just want it to be moving towards that triplet feel, but not totally triplety. Um, I'm going to record everything in without any quantize, um, and then just use uh, the quantize and swing uh, setting here on push. So I'm going to set that to around 60%. Um, cool, so let's, uh, let's start off. Got the metronome on, got accent on as well. There we go. So if I hit quantize, there we go. You can feel that it's, gone, it's given it that swing. Let's put the kick in now. Quantize that again. And then we've got this Japanese bell. Um, actually, it's just really search around for this, and uh, I found it in my sample archives. It's actually from the original Akai S1000 Japanese perk library, if you want to search for that. Um, very hard to come by. Um, but yeah, let's put that in. There we go, quantize that again. Take out the metronome now. And the next sound is this uh, tambourine. This is actually from my O1W, Korg O1W keyboard. So I can actually use the repeat function on here. I've just got this on eighth notes. And what's really good is it inherits uh, the swing um, that we've got set. So let's just record that in. Check that, got that okay? Brilliant. Great, now what I want to do um, with this tambourine uh, is every other note I just want to reduce the velocity. So again I can do this from push. If I hold down uh, these notes here and then I can just reduce the velocity to around 90 and the same here again as well. Just reduce that and then you can hear what that sounds like. Great, so that's sounding really good. Now at the moment that's a two bar loop. I want to turn that into a four bar loop. Um, so I'm just going to hit the double loop um, button there on push. Um, and there's a couple of extra sounds. We've got, I'll just hit repeat off. We've got this tabla sound. Um, so if I just work on the second two bars, just by selecting them there, and just, uh, just going to put that in on the step sequencer. You can hear it hasn't swung it properly, so I'm just going to quantize it. There we go. And then finally, there's an extra little skip note um, on this Japanese bell sound. So again, I'm just going to put that in on the step sequencer and then slightly adjust the timing of it. There we go. So I'm just going to nudge that and reduce the velocity a bit. There we go. Great. Pretty happy with that. Now the great thing about this is it's uh, the same drum pattern uh, all the way through the track, so that makes it uh, very easy. So I'm just going to duplicate that down using push to uh, all these, the first eight scenes. Great, so let's move on to the next sound, um, and this is a bell sound, um, which only happens on a couple of the scenes. Let's just have a look at that. Um, I'm actually just using a preset from Ableton, uh, it's a collision sound called Babylon Bells, um, and I've added uh, some echo and reverb to that, which is very nice. That's going to first happen on the third scene, so let's just record it in. Quantize it, and I'm going to take the loop off as well, so they're only 
triggers once. Great, and I'm going to duplicate that down to the seventh scene there. Okay, so um, the next element that I want to put in is the bass line. And before we do that, I just want to talk about a little of the music theory behind the track. Um, so let's just uh, bring up the chord chart again. I'm figuring this out as uh, B flat minor. So if I just play that scale, we've got five flats. Um, that's the relative minor of D flat major. Now the main chord sequence in this is, uh, is it goes from F minor, um, so that's actually the five chord of D flat minor. Um, then it goes to uh, D flat major uh, over A flat. Then it goes to G flat over B flat. So this is effectively kind of hitting the one chord. Uh, and then the last chord is E flat minor, first inversion over D flat. So the bass lines. playing in a minute um, but then it also switches to uh, the F sharp um, actually starts off like that um, and then goes back down to the, uh, the F minor so it's a bit like a chromatic shift um, although I would say it's probably modulating uh, to F sharp from B flat minor um, so there we go, a bit of music theory. Uh, let's actually put in uh, the bass line part now. So let's just... Uh, there we go. So this is going to go on to the second scene. So that's the part, let's record it in. There we go, and let's quantize that to our same quantize. So you notice that that first note is an F sharp. So this is the intro, this is the, the sort of the break section. I'm gonna copy that part down. That's gonna go down to the seventh scene there. Right, then we go to the B flat minor section, and it's actually gonna start off on, the, uh, on this F. So let's record that in. There we go, and give that the quantize. And I'm going to duplicate that down to the next scene and then also to the last scene as well. Cool, so there's one more part and this is, is a kind of slide on the F sharp. And I can actually use push to do this. So let's record that in. And quantize that. And I'm just going to check uh, that that's going to work. Sometimes the pitch bend affects the next clip. So I'm just going to check that's working. Great, that's working really nicely. Okay, so moving on, um, the next sound we're going to look at is uh, a pad sound um, that runs through the track. So um, I'll have a look at the sound in a minute, what we're using, um, but these are the chords here, F minor, D flat first inversion, G flat, and then E flat minor. So let's record that in now. Quantize that. And again, I'm just gonna duplicate that down to the different scenes. Um, there's one other part on this pad sound, which is on that same scene that I recorded that slide bass. Um, and we're just going to record an F sharp open fifth on that. Quantize that. 
emphasize that again. Lovely. So let's just have a quick look, a quick reveal on uh, which sound I'm using. So this is uh, my favourite synth, one of my favourite synths, comes up all the time. It's the Juno 60 clone, the Tal Uno LX. Um, recently updated as well, it's got a little keyboard on it now, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, that's a really nice pad sound. You can see I've got both of the chorus effects on there, which really do make a big difference. Great, okay, so uh, the next sound we're going to look at uh, is this vibraphone sound. Now, I'm not sure if it, if, uh, it was actually a vibraphone that was used on the original track, um, but I've got something that is quite close. I think it's got more of a sort of synth vibe to it. I'm actually using the Roland JX3P from the Roland Cloud. Um, which I think sounds um, pretty similar, which is pretty good. So uh, let's just bring the keyboard back. There we go. Uh, and for this, I'm just going to change the quantize. I'm actually, for this time, going to stick to the eighth note triplet quantize on this. So I'm going to not rely on the swing anymore. Um, and I'm just going to switch this to the uh, eighth triplet. OK, so let's just look at the sections this is going to go on to. This is the first time. OK, so there are three different parts. I'm going to record in the first one. It's kind of like an arpeggio. So quantize that. Sounding good. Now this is the one where it goes to the F sharp. Let's record that in. Quantize it. Great, and duplicate that down to that scene. And in the last version, happens in the chorus. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly practice it to make sure I get it right. Okay, here we go. Made it. Quantize that. Okay, so we're nearly there. Um, there's one other sound that I want to put in, which is an Indian instrument called tampura. Uh, and this happens sort of in, a, in the transition sections uh, in between the different sections of the track. So I'm just gonna play that now. This is the sound. And I created this um, from the Native Instruments contact library. There's a great uh, Indian collection of sounds. So check that out if you have uh, contact complete. So what I did is I just recorded that in, sampled it, and tried to get the tuning as close as possible to the original. So I'll um, just show you how I put that in. Record it in. There we go. Quantize that. Okay, so um, because the different sections uh, have different lengths, I've actually created these already, so I'm just going to drag them in rather than uh, program them all in now. So there we go. Great, so uh, we've got all the kind of programming parts in now um, and we can look at the vocals and the strings. But before I do that, um, because we've actually got the whole song here mapped out, I'm just going to duplicate those parts down there. So we've got all the different sections. Great, so uh, I mentioned before that we had uh, the fantastic Liza de Castro coming in to record the vocal. It was recorded in this studio here and we can actually look at a little, little snippet of that session. His weekend sense of humour suggests 
Exciting sex His fingers They focus on her Attaches His Venus as a boy Okay, so um, I've actually uh, recorded that into the arrange view, um, but I've split it up into the different sections uh, for the purposes of playing it for this deconstruction. Um, so we can actually have a listen now to how that sounds. His weekend sense of humor suggest. Great, so really sounding lovely. Um, and then likewise, um, we recorded the strings about a week ago, and we can watch a little snippet from that. And likewise, uh, I've chopped that up and um, put that into clips here so we can listen to that in session view. And I just thought it'd be really nice to play, before I play through the whole track, uh, just what the vocals and the strings sound like um, by themselves, soloed. So here we go, here's a little snippet of this. His sense of humour Exciting sex, his fingers, they focus on her, attaches, he's been as a boy. Great, so um, sounds lovely, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, so yeah, let's have a listen through to uh, the whole track from the start. So here we go, Venus as a boy. down here. Sense of boy, he believes in the beauty. 
So there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, it was really uh, fun to do this deconstruction uh, and also work with the students and Gleiser and the string quartet. It was uh, great. So yeah, I look forward to um, being back again soon for another deconstruction. So